Hi, it's Denise of Foursquare Micro Farm, and I am ready for uh, the step two, or it could be considered step three, of the spin the weave along. So all my yarns are done. Here they are. Put them up a little higher so you can see them all. And the camera's pretty true to color in this instance. So let me look and tell you what my completed yardage was. Uh, 1,487 yards, <clears throat> which is way over the 724 that I needed, but you know, just spend, I always spend some extra. Okay. So now I have to decide what I want my warp to look like. And when I first uh, thought about this, I was just going to pretty much just warp. And then I decided, I think I want to make some type of pattern. And so I need to stop and draw out my colors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Most of the time when I plan colors like this, because a lot of times I'm spending neutral colors and I just kind of whatever, you know, wind the warp, wind some colors. And then sometimes, especially if I'm working with the four chef loom and I'm doing a uh, pattern for a twill, the colors are, are kind, they're, they're going to make little V's in the twills. And I want the V's to look a certain way. So I might make the middle color one thing and the two, you know, sets of ascending V's a different color. Or I might want to have a check pattern. So I have to lay out the colors appropriately. So sometimes, like I said, sometimes when it's just a plain weave, I'll just warp whatever floats my boat it doesn't really matter sometimes i'll make stripes in certain patterns uh sometimes i do like a five a one three five or one three five seven or something like that in this case i was just going to warp and they could be just stripes going away but i think i want to do something different so i would usually use colored pencils so i can see this in color but they're still packed and so i can't do that all right, now what I'm going to do is, first of all, I know I need 120 ends. So as I make my pattern, whatever calculation I do, I have to make sure that the end result equals 120. And let me turn to a bigger page. Okay, there we go. This will do. So here I am. This is my middle middle of the heddle. I've got 120 ends. So as I go across from here to here, I need to make sure that I'm going to wind it with 120 ends. So I'm, I'm going to put the count underneath. So here we go. First of all, I'm going to start with the purple. So I'm going to put my P for purple because we've got purple, orange, yellow, light gray, and dark gray. Right? Now, I also know too that the Dark gray is going to be the one I have the least of. So I want to make that consideration too. All the other ones, the skeins are pretty uh, close. The purple, of course, is the one I have the most of. It's going to be the dominant color. So I'm going to start with hmm, maybe six of the purple on this one. And then I'll build my pattern from here. Purple, I like that purple. I think I kind of like that orange after the purple. And then maybe the dark gray or the light gray and then maybe the yellow. So then maybe that, that'll be my outward pattern. So we'll have the purple. We'll have the orange on both sides of it. The light gray. Light gray. And then the yellow. And then the dark gray. And then that will be my pattern for that one. So I can, I can start with, in this case, um, if I want the purple to be the widest, then it's got to be the one that has more on it. So maybe I'll say 12. Uh, and remember too, I've, since I've got 120 ends and I have a um, eight dent read, or it's more like 7.5, 
that really I would be putting 60 ends inside that re if they were a worsted or a bulky weight yarn, which is why I've got 120 instead of 60. So when I say 12, it's really like putting six in. So in my mind, I'm imagining the width of 12 yarns looking like a six. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do this like that. See, if this is 12, right, then I'm going to put six on each end and the width of the lines will get narrower and narrower okay, for now. And then, so for six, I would put, well, I can't really put three. That'd be kind of odd. So I'm going to put four because I need an even number. Okay. That'd be good for that one. And then for the yellow, I only wind up with a thin two for yellow. Okay. And I'm going to do two for this gray. So the yellow and gray are going to be the same. And that's, that's pretty much how I'm going to lay it out. So I'm going to continue across until I have uh, 120 slots open. Or I should say 120 slots filled. And then what I'm going to do from there is calculate how many purple seed, because my purple comes next in the sequence. And then what I have to do is tally how many purples there are. Now, if I was weaving on the four shaft loom and I was making a really big project, I would wind this project the, in the order that they appear here. So I would get the warping board. I would wind six, because remember that's, that's 12. So this other six will go here. I would start here and wind six of these and then wind uh, these right here and then go ahead and wind this one and then wind these two guys on. Bam. And I would do that all the way across till I've fulfilled that one end and then I would do the other end and then I would take uh, the bundles and uh, well, of course there's... Um, you know, you're, you're winding in between your bundles and things like that with your lee sticks and stuff. But I would take those bundles, slide them on the lee sticks, put them on the back, and I would thread in that way. Because it's a bigger loom. And so it makes more sense when I'm covering that kind of distance to wind off like that. But in this case, I'm using my little rigid heddle loom. And I could still do it that way. But for me... I could also just wind off all of the purple and then all of the dark gray and then all of, and you do my totals like that. And then I can thread them where they need to go from that bundle and just tie that on. So how you're going to wind them and thread them depends on how you like to wind and thread. It depends on the size of your loom. What is more efficient uh, to you? With this rigid heddle, I could also direct warp them too, which is when I have the uh, yarn wound in balls or in a cone form, and I pass it directly through the heddle uh, onto the back beam, um, the warp beam, and then back through the heddle uh, continuously with that color. And I could actually zigzag up and down the heddle, filling that purple and where it belongs. Because of course I've got this plan right here in front of me. So I know what holes and what slots they go in as I do this. And I could do that and then do the next color and then the next color, the next color, the next color. It all depends on what's gonna be easiest for you. So in this case, what I am gonna do is, unless I change my mind in the middle, if I do, you'll know. I'm going to wind this, these guys off uh, totals. And then I'm just going to sit down with the loom and uh, run them through uh, in the order that they need to go. And for me, that'll be fastest for this time. Now, I don't do anything consistently as far as this is concerned. Like I said, one day I might decide to do it that way. The other day I might wind them off in the correct order. 
and then feed them through uh, in chains. Sometimes I direct warp depending on how much space I have. But the whole point is that if you're going to make a pattern, you and if you want to, if you're going to make a pattern that you're going to lay out, you know, if you're just going to wing it, hey, go for it. But if, if you want a certain pattern, you really do want to lay it out ahead of time and make some sense of it and make sure that you wind off all the ends you're going to need to fulfill that pattern before you start winding and cutting. All right, I'll see you next at the warping board. Okay, so here it is. I know it looks absolutely insane, but basically this is a sketch of what my petal will look like from the middle out onto both sides. And this tells me how many of the colors I have to wind. And if I want to wind them in order, this will tell me exactly how many uh, I wind in which order. Basically, it's just um, the little two for me means that they're in pairs of two. And this is one, two, three, four bundles of two going that way. I totaled them up. I counted. I made sure. And I'm going to go ahead and wind my warp. You're probably asking yourself, okay, so what are you doing? Well, this is my warping board, and yes, it's on the floor. So you're wondering, why is it on the floor? And basically because there is no conceivable space where I can nail this thing up on any wall or any door. And that is just the truth. I just can't. So there's no room really for me to put it except for on the floor. Or as I like to do it on the bed. And I like to wrap my warp sitting on the bed, which is probably not the best thing for my back, but that's the way I do it. Though I recommend that if you have available space, put up on the door or on the wall. So here I am on the floor. And there are two different ways to do this. First of all, I could take a measuring tape. I could measure along the path that I'm going and try to figure out where I need to stop that will give me the length that I'm looking for. I do have a longer measuring tape and I've done it that way. It works, but it's also easier and I would say probably more accurate to use a guide string. Sometimes I have a guide string that is different from the yarn I'm using. Sometimes I measure out the yarn I'm using. So, I measure my guard, my guide string to the length of the warp that I need. Plus I add a little extra and I add a little extra because when you're putting the warp on, you're adding it under tension. And so I know that I want to account for the extra tension that I'm adding to it. So I'm not losing any length off of this. I wind it around to decide on the path it needs to take in order to accurately wind on the length I need. This is what I have here. Let me see if I can change that a little bit to wind up on a better peg. I'm still kind of winding up here. I would actually rather wind up back down there. That might not even be possible. Nope. So what I'm going to do is to wind up on this peg cleanly right here. When I wind my warp, I'm going to add just an extra little bit here. Oh, that's springy acrylic. Gotta tell you. I'm going to add a little extra here so that I can wind up here nice and clean. But this right here gives me the path I need to take basically in order to get the length of yarn that I'd like to put on here. Now, after I've got this situated, 
Okay, and let me tell you, with fingernails, it is kind of hard to do some of these activities. Okay, so now I've got that situated. And what I'm going to do next, uh, this is another one of those, uh, there's a best practice, and then it was like a quick and dirty method. And I'm the kind of person who knits from the hank. Like, <laughs> like pretty much I just start and I unravel like that, which is not good if you're traveling when you're knitting, but I'm very seldom traveling and knitting because I'm usually the one driving. So I just laid across my lap and I knit. I, I wound the skein so I know exactly how it's going to behave. If you didn't wind the skein, this might not be the best thing, but I do that. So I do the same thing with weaving a lot of times. I will warp right from the hank just like this and I don't have a lot of problems. Sometimes I'll take the hank and put it onto the warping board to stretch across that and I'll do that. But best practice, I recommend winding these guys into cakes or if you have an umbrella swift, you can put them on the umbrella swift and you can warp from there. I do have an umbrella swift now. So I could put this on the umbrella swift uh, or I could make it into a ball. If I was direct warping, uh, I would wind it into a ball. Bam. And so uh, one of the reasons I don't, I prefer the swift or doing like this over the ball is that when it comes time to know how much leftover yarn I have, I can count that a lot easier than I can count in a ball. But bam. So I'm going to go ahead in this case and put this onto the umbrella swift that I wound this off in the first place. And then I'm going to wind. get the point kind of how it works uh, it works a lot smoother when uh, your skein is turned in the better direction I have to consider that for next time I didn't realize it would be so directional basically and then normally what I would do if I was using the four shaft like I said these rules kind of change when I'm using different um, looms because I can't get away with this um, with the four shaft like I can I've only got a few strings on the rigid head but with the four shaft it's a lot more strings and, and my patterns are more complex so I can't just wind whatever and just toss the bundle up there not unless I want a big mass of confused threads so but in this case uh, I don't have to worry about that but I would still advise you to do the same thing I would do on a four shaft just in case you are actually using a four shaft and not a rigid heddle like I'm using now I would count out uh, every 10 group of 10 and I would tie those group of 10 and I would tie them uh, down here and here, sometimes over here, here, but I would make several ties in these groups of 10. And sometimes you can tie each group individually. Sometimes you kind of weave through. I guess it depends. In this case, because I'm winding each color separately, I would tie each bundle separately. If I was winding them in, in sequence, I would wind through because I'm actually laying that entire bundle down uh, all together. And then you want to tie your cross right here. And uh, well, since I'm doing rigid head, I'm not using any leaf sticks, but I still might want to tie my cross here. And I really want to put a good choke on the end that's going to go closest to the heddle. So I don't have a big, you know, black blab of that yarn jump out at me once I cut this off. So I am about on number uh, 14 or 15. So or I'm halfway through with this. Oh, I did that wrong. So you got to catch that kind of stuff. I'm halfway through with this guy here. And then I'm going to put the orange directly on top of it and the yellow. And I'll join you again once I have all of my colors on the warping board. And I will show you what I mean by tying different colors. 